Hey guys, it's Bishop Sozzi here and welcome to episode 6 of my Everton series for Football Manager 2015. As you can see, we did come 6th in the league. Pretty disappointing to say the least because we were flying quite high in the Champions League uh, spots for most of the season. Uh, we were 3rd for, for quite a bit of it, um, challenging City who were 2nd at the time as well. As you can see, we finished on 66 points, 3 behind Tottenham in 5th and Arsenal in the last Champions League spot by a further two, so five points, sorry, yeah, five points was the gap, which isn't a lot, but, uh, you know, I did expect us to actually make the Champions League when we were doing so well. We did drop off towards the end of the season, though, which was really disappointing. Um, I'll get into the fixtures in a minute, but as you can see down here, we did make the Europa League semi-final as well, but we did lose to Inter Milan, um, and I'll show you the fixtures in that in a minute. It was horrible the way we went out as well. Um, it was a really, really bitter moment. Um, so far on this year's or oh, on this version of the game, I should say. So yeah, um, we'll have a look at the league table quickly. As you can see, Chelsea won with 96 points, you know, some way off, over 20 points on Man United, who came second on 75. Man City in third on 74, so one point behind the Manchester rivals um, this season. Relegated teams were Burnley, West Brom, and West Ham. Pretty uh, surprising to see West Ham all the way down in 20th position. They do have a fairly decent squad, so that was a little bit surprising. Um, so yeah, we did obviously get uh, Euro uh, Europa League football for next season as well, um, but we already had that clinched with the Capital One Cup victory in the previous episode. So yeah, nothing too special there. Um, pretty disappointed not to actually win the ch uh, win, you know, top a top four spot this season, um, but. I didn't make any transfers, so, I mean, sixth for Everton first season with the squad they have, uh, I guess it's a fair result. Really happy to, you know, win a piece of silverware as well. Um, we're going to the fixtures now. Um, it's not the fixtures, schedule, there we go. Um, the previous episode was the Capital One Cup, but we hadn't done a fixture review since the mid-season review. God, I said review a few times there. So we'll get into that, and that came obviously just at the end of January. So the first game was against Leeds, and we beat them 3-1 in the FA Cup fourth round replay. As you can see, Romelu Lukaku got a brace for us in extra time, and Aidy McGeady also got a goal in extra time for us as well. Fairly even game, but we did get the two extra goals um, coming in the um, extra time period. So that was pretty good. Next game up was against Tottenham. We lost to them 2-1 away from home in the Premier League. You know, a hard loss to take as I am an Arsenal fan in real life. So Eric Lamela got a brace and Ross Barkley got one for us after he scored his two. And we never really got into that game, so it was pretty disappointing um, to not even challenge them for the three points. Um, but we did bounce back against Aston Villa in the next game. A 2-1 victory at home was, you know, just what we needed after that loss. As you can see, distant open scoring. Villar got one back for him before who else but Lukaku getting one back for us. And as you can see, one shot on target for one goal. Pretty much a common trend against us. Teams scoring, you know, two goals off two shots on target. Yeah, happens quite a lot. We then versus Tottenham again. Drew with them in the FA Cup fifth round at home, which obviously meant it went to a replay. As you can see, their 18-year-old youth prospect, Nathan Adua, got a brace for himself despite being 18 years old and having fairly shit stats. Lane Baines got one for us, and it was a Lloris own goal for the other one. And as you can see, they had three shots on target and scored two goals. So, yeah, just what I mentioned before. The next game was against um, Zenit in the Europa League knockout, first knockout round. First leg, we drew one all at home. Again, another draw at home, pretty disappointing. And as you can see, we were very lucky to actually get the draw. But once again, dominated them. They had three shots on target, scored one goal. And it was a one-all draw, despite us having 11 shots on target and scoring in the 91st minute through Steven Pienaar. So, yeah. Tactic works really well. We just get, I guess, extremely unlucky. I don't know how to put it. But we then lost against Burnley away from home in the Premier League, which was really disappointing, obviously. Um, again, fairly, fairly dominant. Yeah, ugh, words getting mixed up. Fairly dominant performance, but, yeah, we didn't score... I only had four shots on target, so I guess it's a little bit fair, but we played them off the park, to be honest, um, as far as possession and stuff goes, and our regular shots. 
Next game was against Zenit in the second leg of the first knockout round. And as you can see, we beat them 8-2 away from home. Incredible performance by the boys. I was really happy with this. Um, obviously, my biggest performance, uh, well, my biggest win on this year's version so far of the game. They opened the scoring, actually, through Lombards. We go on back through Pina. Leighton Baines got a brace. Lukaku got a brace. And Morales actually got a hat-trick. So it was really good to see, and um, pretty disappointing to actually concede two goals, but they did come in the first, you know, 12 or so minutes. And we usually concede at least one goal within the first 15 minutes in most games anyway, so, yeah, it's a fairly common trend. Where are we up to? Uh, Arsenal was the Capital One Cup game that you guys saw. I'll just go over it very quickly. Our goal is coming from the Kaku, Baines, and Morales right at the end of the game to give us the Capital One Cup victory. We then faced Tottenham in the replay of the FA Cup 5th round and did lose them at White Hart Lane. And as Azoi, or I think it's another youth player actually. Yes it is, a 17 year old getting the goal there to send us out of the cup. So, you know, they're youngsters absolutely destroying us for whatever reason with not very impressive stats either, which is always hard to take. We bounced back however in the Premier League and beat Crystal Palace 4-0 at home. Lukaku with a brace, Morales and Distant on the score sheet there. And, um, yeah, for once, the team didn't score against us, and we kept a clean sheet. So, good stuff there. Let me head back down. Locomotive Moscow was up next in the second knockout round of the Europa League. We beat them 4-2 at home first up in the first leg. Distant with a brace, Lukaku and Megidi. And uh, Pavel Lachenko was actually playing for them, and he scored. I think he actually scored in both legs, so we'll have a look in a second, but... Um, next game up was Leicester, we beat them 4-1 in the Premier League, fairly straightforward, Morales, Brace, Barkley and Timmy Cahill on the score sheet for us there, and um, they did get a goal from their two shots in target, which once again is a fairly common trend, especially against me, I'm not sure if other people are getting something similar to that, but the next leg against Lokomotiv Moscow did finish 2 all away from home in Russia, pretty disappointing as you can see, Pavlichenko scored again, they got another goal, Players sent off, Lukaku and Baines getting our goals there, but um, we could only manage a draw in Russia. But we did go through to the quarter-final, which was good. However, we lost our next game to Man City in the Premier League, 2-0. Aguero, Zeko, but Flamini got sent off and pretty much, you know, ruined the game for us when they dominated from that point onwards, um, more so than they would have before, probably. West Ham was the next game. Obviously, they came last this season. We beat them 4-1 at home in the Premier League. Cahill, Jagielka, Lukaku, and Baines. And uh, Gus Puyat's son got sent off there, which was good. Helped us, but it was pretty late on anyway. The next game was QPR at home, and we won that game as well. 2-1 this time. Not as convincing. Lukaku and Kone getting on the score sheet. And once again, one shot on target, and they score a goal. Typical. The next game was the... Oh, sorry, it was another Premier League game, this time against Swansea, and we did lose in Wales 2-0. Uh, Sung Kyung... Sung Kyung? Oh, well, his name's Key. We, everybody knows him by Key. And uh, Sigurdsson on the score sheet for them. We didn't actually manage a shot on target. I didn't realise that, but that is really bad, and that doesn't happen very often. The next game was the quarter-final of the Europa League, and as you can see, we did draw Atletico Madrid... And we did actually beat them. So it's pretty interesting. Two all draw at home in the first leg though. Pretty disappointing. Lukaku got a brace. Menzukic opened the scoring in the third minute. Like I mentioned, we always concede. And Leighton Baines scored the weirdest own goal I think I've ever seen on a game of football manager. Probably down to the, you know, down to the fact that this is the beta version at the moment. Um, but yeah, two goals conceded, two shots on target. Ah, typical, eh? Typical. Anyway, the next game, we actually won very... Con well, not very convincingly, I shouldn't say that. Um, the wrong words. But it was, obviously, in Spain. As you can see, Cersei opened the scoring for them. Lukaku got one back right on the you know, the stroke of half-time. And Distin got us in front. But as you can see, we dominated them. Once again, three shots on target for one goal. Oh, it's just so annoying. But our players played well, and we got through to the semi-final of the Europa League. Um, this is where the form started to drop off. As you can see, we lost to Sunderland 2-1 at home. Our only goal coming from Jagielka. Distin scored another own goal, but we were, you know, we weren't getting as much into the games as we should have been. And, you know, my tactic has been, you know, brilliant up until this point, really. 
The only games we've lost have been, you know, a couple of league... Um, not league... What am I talking about? Yeah, a couple of league games every now and then. Um, but the rest have been, you know, cups and, and stupid stuff that I'm not really that interested in. The next game against Hull, away from home, we lost again. 3-1 this time. As you can see, all three of their goals came within three minutes. We were in front... And then we conceded three goals in three minutes. That is just ridiculous, and I can't believe that happened. Aluko in the 83rd, El Mohamedy in the 85th, and then Aluko in the 86th once again. Absolute joke. And then we lost to Arsenal. 3-1 away from home once again. Um, this game was a bit more, you know, straightforward. Um, we actually opened the scoring through Kone. Uh, Podolski got a brace, and Sanchez also on the score sheet. Um, Podolski just loves scoring against me for whatever reason. We then lost the first leg of the Europa League semi-final to Inter. Away from home in Italy, as you can see, Kovacic getting on the score sheet. We didn't deserve to win, so, you know, I'll take that any day of the week. Um, I mean, to be honest, with the, you know, the rate of goals to shots on target, we probably should have scored a goal from that one shot on target, but anyway, that's not, <laughs> that's not realistic. Um, West Brom was the next game. We drew one all at home in the league. Again, a game we should have probably won, as you can see by the stats. Lukaku getting our goal, and Brunt getting an equaliser for them with four shots in target. So that's four shots in target for one goal. I'll take that. It's not the worst, you know, odds in the world. 25% chance. Uh, but anything lower than that is pretty much ridiculous. Um, so the next game was the second leg of the Europa League semi-final, and as you can see... We drew one all at home, so obviously they went through. But as you can see, Leighton Baines scored our goal. Their equaliser through Nagatomo was their only shot on target. Three shots, one on target, and they scored the goal to send them through to, to the Europa League final. Um, and yeah, I was absolutely freaking shattered after that game. Uh, I actually, like, I didn't want to play anymore, so I had a break for a little while after that. It's the type of game you lose, well, you don't lose, but obviously I drew, but, you know, lose on aggregate, and you just don't want to play Football Manager anymore, because you think it's absolute bullshit. Anyway, the next game was the Merseyside derby, and we drew 4 all with Liverpool at Anfield. As you can see, um, Lukaku got a brace, Morales and Leighton Baines got a penalty. Dumbia got a brace for them, Sturridge and Lucas Leiva on, also on the score sheet. I mean, the stats were fairly even, we had a little bit more possession they had. A few more shots, so, yeah, fairly even, 4 all, pretty much, you know, what a derby's all about, I suppose. And uh, the final game of the season was a boring nil-all drug match at home, and um, obviously we couldn't really do much about that. Um, good to see we dominated possession, but we obviously couldn't take our chances. And Coleman got man of the match for a rare start, because I pretty much played uh, Stones at right back for most of the season. Anyway, we'll have a look at the squad now, and I would like to change this if I can. And go selection info. Average rating. And we'll have a look at the team's top performers. Obviously, Leighton Baines was on the bench for the last game. I wanted to give Oviedo the last game of the season because I kind of already knew that we weren't able to get the uh, Champions League spot. But Leighton Baines, team's top performer, you know, vice-captain of the club, 7.58 rating, 16 goals. Pretty much played every game with 58 appearances, but 16 goals. Yes, he is the penalty taker and the free kick taker, but he has scored a few from open play as well. Ross Barkley, when he came back from his injury, played really well. 7.33 in 31 games um, and three sub-appearances with five goals. Not the best, obviously, but he did get quite a few assists. And I might actually have a look at those now, if I can. Oh, he didn't get that many assists, to be fair. Four assists in the league, three in the cup, and three in Europa League. So, played really well in the Europa League in the cups, but not too well in the league. Probably due to the, you know, the poor run we had at the end there. Lukaku, 41 goals in 56 starts with three sub-appearances. 41 goals. That is amazing. Absolute world-class player. 21 years old as well. Um, he'll obviously be at the club for, for the foreseeable future. 7.32 just behind Barkley there, but very good performer. Um, his goals did dry up in that bad patch, which was pretty much why we, you know, did so poorly, I suppose. Distin wasn't going to play him much um, throughout the season, but he basically forced his way into the squad. 
a 7.3 match rating, 8 goals from set pieces and stuff, 48 starts. Then we had Stones, like I mentioned, played right back most of the season, 7.25 from 52 with one goal. Jagielka behind him with 59 starts, pretty much played every single game, I think. I don't actually know if there was a game he missed, maybe from an accumulation of yellow cards or something. 7.19, uh, Morales, 24 goals from 56 starts, 7.18. Again, he was one of the players that dropped off, and pretty much Lukaku and Morales were the, obviously our main goal scorers, and when they weren't scoring, no, well, the team wasn't scoring pretty much, so yeah, 7.18. McCarthy got a 7.15. Flamini played a few games, 19 starts with a 7.13. And then we had Pina, who got a lot of injuries. He's very injury prone. I've noticed that obviously he's injured right now as well. But he had 42 starts, 9, sub, uh, nine goals, sorry, and a 7.10. Not the best. We might look to bring in a left winger, uh, depending on the budget next season. Um, we'll have a look at that. And uh, then we had Coleman just behind him. And pretty much from there onwards, the players were all poor. Um, Common had a 7.05, and it's actually starting to complain about not me not playing him enough, despite having 28 starts and 8 sub-appearances for the season. Tim Cahill, one last little mention for him, he played well sometimes. Um, 16 starts, 7 sub-appearances, 4 goals, 7.03 rating as well. Fairly happy with that for a player of his age, what is he, 35? Thought he might have been 36 now. But he obviously is declining, so yeah, I'm not too sure. What we're going to be doing with him, might let him go, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, that's the player ratings. Um, I'm not too sure if there's anything else I need to really go over. We've got a few transfers coming in, as you can see, down the bottom there. Um, I'm happy with what I'm bringing in, to be honest. Um, really happy that we won the Capital One Cup this season. A little bit disappointed with the league finish in six there. Um, I would have loved to have gotten Champions League football in my first season. Um, I will be bringing out a tactic video for my tactic here, the even flow. Um, I really love this tactic. Um, I haven't tweaked it too much. I think the reasoning behind the poor form this season was due to me not changing the uh, team training. I've pretty much left it on um, team cohesion and defensive positioning for the entire season, which is where I assume we went wrong. I probably should have put it on something like ball control um, at certain stages, because there were games where we were losing the ball a lot, and it probably would have helped us a lot more. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. I also probably should have put that on uh, defensive set pieces, because we did concede quite a few goals to the, uh, the to the set piece, um, which is pretty much why teams, you know, probably had low shots and target for, for certain goals, because they were off set pieces and stuff like that. Um, I'm not too sure about that anyway. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, Hopefully we get a decent budget for next season, which will be the next episode, guys. That will be the pre-season episode. And I think... I'm not 100% sure if we actually go into the Community Shield. I think it's the FA Cup winner. Um, but obviously that will be the live com in the next episode, along with pre-season um, and all the transfers and stuff as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode, guys. It's been a pretty good... Um, series so far, you guys have been smashing the likes on them, the views have been amazing, the first episode as of right now I think is like 1300 views, so that's great. Um, I apologise for not uploading um, in a, you know the last few days or so, I had a really busy weekend and stuff, um, so that's pretty much the reasoning behind that anyway. Um, but these videos, will, I'll try and bring them out daily, but you know, don't crucify me if they're not out daily because, yeah, obviously things can happen and stuff like that, and some episodes take a little bit longer to to bring out than others do, so yeah, um, please give this video a like rating and a favourite guys, head over to my channel and subscribe if you are a new viewer or anything like that I suppose, if you haven't subscribed before as well, and um, I'll see you in the next episode which will be pre-season, and um, all the transfers and stuff I make as well, goodbye guys.